section 1.1, the study of chemistry. So this is the introduction to this class and uh, why would you study chemistry? Um, it's central to everything that you do. It's, it has an impact on everything you touch, your health care and your food and your clothing, the conservation of natural resources, uh, environmental issues. Um, it touches every science that you would study. Biology can't be described without chemistry. Engineering, you couldn't engineer anything without knowing how it was put together. Um, agriculture, we wouldn't make any food uh, without chemistry. Geology, all the rocks are, are chemicals. Physics, uh, physics is explained because of how things are made and they're made up of, of described by chemistry. So it's central to all the sciences, and uh, it's also extremely interesting to understand what's going on around you right down to how it's made. When God said that in, in the book of Hebrews that by faith we know that things which are are made from things which you can't see. That's, that's amazing. It's so cool. So I've got a picture here of um, the Swan Nebula. This is all hydrogen gas. It's colored by a computer, but it's all hydrogen gas. It's thousands of light years away, and it's still the same matter. The same stuff that's here is everywhere that we can find. Um, this is fall leaves. All the colors that are in leaves are there all year. And then when the chlorophyll, which is a chemical, disappears, the colors that were already in the leaves will show up. All that is chemistry. The reason that a leaf would fall from the tree in the first place is chemistry. All of it is chemicals interacting with each other. So it's changing. So we need to know that it's, it's the changes that matter undergoes. It's the changes uh, of energy that, that uh, all the materials in the world and the universe interacting will produce as... Um, as it encounters each other. So there's a few different branches of chemistry. Um, there's organic, which contain, is anything that contains carbon. Uh, it's so specific that essentially you, you need a couple years just to study that because it's so incredibly uh, complicated. It's as the, the basis of biochemistry, which is uh, all of the chemistry that goes on in living things. Um, so everything that happens in your body is a chemical reaction. You are a chemistry re working right now. How you think, your thinking, your, uh, your, your muscle moving, all of it is chemical interaction. Inor inorganic is what we're going to be studying. That's the, that is essentially um, not carbon-based. Basically, everything else that's not organic would be considered inorganic chemistry. And then green chemistry is, is hot right now. That is, how do you do something without like poisoning uh, the environment as a result? So it touches, this is energy, biochemistry, technology, medicine. Chemistry is central to all of that. Also wanted to mention the difference between science and technology. Technology is an application of science. Science is knowing something, learning something. Uh, scientia in Latin is just the idea of knowledge. So what do we know about the world? What do we know about it all? And then technology is our applications. How, how are we going to make some money off of what we know? And so there's every kind of aspect of that. So the this section uh, deals with the very basics. So uh, it's matter. So it's the physical material of the universe. It's anything that has mass and takes up space. And so we'll see that there's different types of properties or characteristics that help us recognize a particular type of matter and distinguish it from other matter. So we'll talk about physical properties, about color and melting point and all kinds of stuff like that distinguishes one type of matter from another. Right now there's about 118 types of matter. They're called elements. So one atom is the smallest unit of an element. And then atoms 
um, can can combine in different ways. So atoms are the building blocks. In fact, in Greek, it meant not divisible, so not breakupable. And now we know now that atoms are actually made up of other subatomic particles uh, that we'll look at. But atoms essentially are the smallest unit of matter that that still holds on to its characteristics or its properties. The names of the elements um, are derived from a wide variety of sources. There's there's Latin ones that have known since Roman times or Greek times. There's mythological characters. There's names of people. There's names of places. There's uh, there's universities. There's uh, all kinds of different uh, different things in the elements, but there's about 118 of them. Right now, they're usually named after famous scientists. Um, if two or more atoms come together and they're, they're held together in a specific shape, uh, normally some kind of electrically held together, uh, it's called a molecule. And a molecule uh, has new properties. So not just are the atoms having properties, but when the atoms come together, there's new properties, and which is mystifying that these, as soon all these Legos that are coming together can make new stuff. Um, macroscopic is is what you can see with your eye. Microscopic, what you can not see with your eye. And most of the time, we're talking about microscopic things, but all chemi everything's made up of chemicals. If you want to think of them as chemicals, atoms, elements, matter. And so the interactions of these things in a microscopic way has serious effects on what you can see. Um, so these are... These are um, one type of atom. The different colors are one type of atom. He, he, uh, hydrogen is white. Oxygen is red here. Carbon is black. So you can have um, one type of element that makes, you know, that, that combines with itself. But a compound is normally two or more types of matter that have come together. So, so you've got some water here. Um, this is water, carbon dioxide. Ethanol is ethyl alcohol, would be moonshine. I think you'd call it moonshine. Ethylene glycol is antifreeze, aspirin. So you can see that all drugs would be made out of, of you would need chemistry to do it. Um, any new materials, if you're going to make an airplane or a spaceship or something like this, you would need chemistry to know what it is that's happening there. Um, and again, it's just it's just far reaching. The last uh, thing I wanted to say was uh, about the scientific method. So the scientific method is just a way of bumping into the world and learning from each step. So you you observe something and then you make some kind of a a bold statement of you know I think this. Then you design some experiments to test that hypothesis, and then. You revise the hypothesis over and again as you see the the observe as you observe what's happening in the reaction. Um, over long, long periods of time, then you could gain enough guts, I suppose, or evidence to say that there's a theory. So that there's so many studies have been done in this area that a theory is a is an explanation of how think something works that has broad support. And lots and lots of people have done experiments to it. Um, you can uh, you can always disprove something with a new experiment. So everyone's always trying to, in fact, every scientist is trying to disprove something. And that's the only way you can do it is, is there any way I can think of to make this not work? Then I'll know that it's not that. It must be something else and you just keep looking. Um, eventually you can get to a point where um, a law will be will be determined that this is so overwhelmingly evident that it must be the law. So the law of gravity, say. Okay, so we're going to start in this. I think uh, it's going to be a hard class. Uh, it's going to be very fascinating, um, and we'll try to work together.